Assalamu alaikum my dear students hope you are all well by the grace of almighty Allah welcome to our NIEBS home school I am Shandi Darman assistant teacher of N uh, National Ideal English Version School day shift and today I am going to take a science class for the student of class 6 our class topic is chapter 7 reading done lecture number 14 teacher Shandi Darman and my mobile number 01919941895. Today we will discuss chapter 7 and uh, now let us start our class. The name of our chapter is properties of matter and it an external effect. The name of our chapter is properties of matter and external effect. Now we discuss this chapter. Thousand types of matter like iron, copper, rubber, wood, etc. are related closely to our daily life. As different matters have different properties, any one of them can be brought into use for a certain purpose. In our environment, there are lots of matter like iron, copper, zinc, molybdenum, plastic, wood, um, um, then many other things, glass. So, we use these matters in different purpose in our everyday life. Now we will discuss about different kinds of matter. Lesson number 1 to 3, the properties of matter and their classification. So we are to use various materials in doing different work. We use of thousands of materials starting with the water to wash our hands and face just after getting up from the bed in the morning. We bring to use various type of food, crockery, cloths, toys, stone, cycle, football, marble, book, etc. Of these, some are soft, some are hard, some are shiny, some are round, and some are flat. But all of those are matter. All things are made of matter. All of these materials occupy space and have mass. So, we can say that things which occupy space and have mass are called matter. Like this white hole. This is also a matter because it takes space and also it has mass. So, we can, th uh, this is a matter. This thing is a matter. It has the size, shape and also it has volume. And it takes place when I put it in the table it take the uh, place of the table so it is also one kind of matter there are numerous type of matter in the world and they are classified in various ways among these one of the classification is based on the state of the matter let us take an, an example when a piece of ice is kept in a pot what happens it is converted into water again we can convert the water into vapor by heating it up so it appears that water can be found in three different states ice water and vapor when water remains in the form of ice it is solid state when we uh, found water in the ice form it is a solid form of water then when we give heat to the water it will be uh, it will be liquid so it is the form of uh, liquid form of the water then again we give temperature to the liquid water after a few minutes when it um, reaches to the boiling temperature then the water begin to boil so it is the boiling water it is the gaseous state of water so water vapor when water remains in the form of ice it is in solid form when it remains water it is liquid state again when it becomes vapor or steam it takes gaseous state so matter is divided into three groups depending on its state and they are solid liquid and vapor or gas now the question is what characteristics are responsible for making a matter liquid solid and vapor now a solid body has a definite size the space occupied by a body is its volume as all solid bodies occupy space they all have volume the size and volume of a solid body cannot be changed easily it is highly rigid highly rigid means it is very uh, strong and not flexible that is it has rigidity it has the strongness 
although some of the solids have less rigidity. Now you see in my hand there is a stone. It is a solid thing. It has side. It has a definite side. It has a shape and also it has a volume. And when I put this uh, stone in the table or in my hand, it takes some place. So solid things has definite size, shape and it has definite volume. Now liquid things. Now we will know about the property of liquid. A liquid has no definite size. It holds the size of a container while it is kept. Liquid has a definite volume because it occupies space like solid. Its volume can be also measured. Does this volume changes? No. Although depending on the size of the container, the size of the liquid changes, but the volume remains the same. As a liquid has no definite size, its size is changeable. Therefore, it can be said that the liquid is not rigid like solid. Liquid has no rigidity. Now, I take a my water in this bottle. So in this bottle it is a uh, 1 liter bottle when I take water in this bottle it takes the shape of this bottle when I pour this water into a balti then it takes the whole space of the balti so water has no definite size or shape but it has the volume like here is 1 liter when I pour this water into the balti then the water volume is same because only 1 liter water is poured into the balti. So I can say that water has no definite, water has the definite volume but no size and shape. And also this liquid has no rigidity like solid. Now vapor, let us take the example of air to understand the property of gas. Like air, no gas has any definite size. Is there any definite volume of, gas, of a gas? Think of two cylinders, one small and another large. Now, if you keep the same amount of gas in both the cylinders, the gas will occupy the space whole uh, area of the small cylinder as well as of the large cylinder. Then it can be said that when the same amount of gas is kept in a small cylinder, its volume is small and it is kept in the large cylinder, it volume is large that means the volume of the gas is the volume of the container in which it is kept so gas has no definite size and volume now we uh, pour oxygen gas into two cylinder one cylinder is large and another cylinder is small when we pour same amount of uh, oxygen in the large cylinder it take the whole space of the large cylinder and when we pour the same amount of the gas in the small cylinder it take the whole space of the small cylinder so the gas has no definite size, shape and volume. In addition to that some other characteristics which can be taken into account for classify matters are density, rigidity, flexibility, thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. Yes, matters have some uh, another characteristic like flexibility, rigidity, thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity means it can um, take the heat from one place to another and electrical conductivity that means uh, the matter which can carry electricity from one place to another that means it is called uh, electrical conductivity. Now rigidity and flexibility. Some matters are soft, some are hard, some are flexible and some are non-flexible. <coughs> Do the task below to know about these things. Take a pot of aluminium, one piece of rubber, one piece of wood, a candle, one piece of a stone and a nail. Stress them with a metal key and observe what is happening. Which one can be uh, stretched easily and which one is not so easily. Take each of them between two finger and apply pressure. You will see that um, of them are flexible, some of them are flexible while some are hard and inflexible. Also find that some of these things have rough surface which uh, while some are smooth and some are breakable. Now we take different things like this stone, we take this pan, we take this pencil or rubber. Then we um, uh, press it or we uh, press in the in two finger then we found that it is not pressed. So it has rigidity. We found that different uh, matter has different 
rigidity some are flexible some are inflexible like rubber rubber is flexible but stone it is not flexible or iron or copper it is not so much flexible like rubber some are very breakable and some are not breakable matters can be divided into different types of <coughs> on the basis of the density but it is seen that metals have the highest density among all solids in the next lesson we will discuss some more properties of matter but matter has the most uh, solidity highest density among all solid things lesson number 4 and 5 properties of metal and non metal on the basis of various characteristic of the density matter is divided into two types metal and non metal matter is divided into two groups metal and non metal metal and non metal metal we use various types of aluminum pots gold jewelry electrical wire made of copper for many purposes how do this matter looks like they all shine or glitter this is common characteristic of most of the metals most of the metals are um, have the shine or glitter on the other hand we use aluminum pot or iron pot for cooking why because they transmit the heat from the open fire to the main ingredients of the cooking and the ingredients get boiled due to the heat hence another characteristic of metal is they conduct heat so metals are called good thermal conductor so matter are divided into two groups metal and non metal two groups metal and non metal and metal has some characteristic like most of the metals are shiny and glittery so it is the common characteristic of the metal another characteristic of metal is they can conduct heat so metals are called good thermal conductor and uh, metal or non no metallic matters are shiny heat and electric conductor and metal can be electrical conductor because they can uh, transmit the electricity from one place to another like copper silver gold like this thing they are used to uh, conducting electricity from one place to another non metal can you tell how gases uh, gases such as nitrogen oxygen or hydrogen do you will not be able to answer this question because these gases neither glitter like metals nor they have any visible feature to mark again they do not conduct heat or electricity uh, like metals so non metals are called thermal and electrical non conductor or insulators so non metal things are not electrical conductor or thermal conductor now task to observe the thermal conductivity of the metal copper require accessories thick copper wire take two thick copper wire two pieces of cork we take two pieces of cork cork is uh, not uh, thermal conductor safety matches candle or spirit lamp procedure insert the copper wire carefully through the cork so that the cork remains in the middle of the wire we put uh, cork in the middle of the uh, copper wire so it remains in the middle let lead the candle now holding one end of the wire place its other end on the candle flame in this way hold the wire until your hand does not feel warm now we take two copper wire thick copper wire we uh, pour two cork in the middle of the copper wire then we lead the lamp and we place this copper wire into one um, one side of the copper wire into the candle and other end of the copper wire we hold this then we uh, feel that after a few minutes we feel warm in our hand because this copper wire take the heat from the candle and this conduct Uh, thermal it is thermal conductor that's why heat transmit from this end to our this portion here what is the reason of using cork it is used so that the heat from the flame could not reach directly to the hand why do you uh, feel the heat at the end of the copper wire that you are holding in your hand one end of the wire receives the heat from the flame and it travels to the other end because copper is a good conductor 
if it was not so you may not have felt the heat therefore it is proved by this experiment that copper is a good thermal conductor in fact all metals conduct heat like copper that is why metal are used where thermal conduction is essential so therefore it is uh, our moral duty to ensure proper use uh, uses as well as to avoid wastage of metal now we will do another experiment for this experiment we need some things observing the thermal conductivity of various matter required accessories one wooden spoon we take one wooden spoon one plastic spoon one aluminium spoon three one taka coins one beaker of 60 ml 600 ml 300 ml water a speed lamp wax safety matches and a stopwatch make a wax soft by heating it moderately add a little soft wax on the handle of each spoon now place the coins on the wax with pressure so that the coins get stuck on the spoon take about 300 ml water in the beaker and put it on the speed lamp now immerse the three spoons in the beaker by holding them with thread in such a way that the coins stay outside the upper portion of the beaker lit up the speed lamp and continue to heat the beaker carefully observe the coins use the stopwatch to record the time to determine the time taken by each of coin for being separated from the spoon we take three spoon one is wooden spoon another one is aluminium spoon and one is plastic spoon and we press one taka coin with the help of wax into with the uh, spoon then we hold this three spoon uh, in, on the top uh, on the side of a beaker which is pour with water and we give heat to this water and then when the uh, water is boiling the heat go to the <coughs> touch these three spoons and the wax is melting from which spoon do the coins get separated at first from uh, uh, which is happened last of all what are the coins separated undoubtedly the coin on the aluminum spoon is separated at first because the aluminum is a good conductor so that's why as the aluminum is a good conductor the coin removes from the aluminum spoon at first because aluminum is a good conductor of heat that's why it is heated up and then coin removed from the spoon and again the thermal conductivity is less than the aluminum but greater than plastic so thermal conductivity of the wood is less than aluminum but greater than plastic that's why the wooden spoon which take the heat from the a boiling water and then the coin removes from the wooden spoon and at last the plastic is not conductor a conductor of thermal conductors that's why the coin removed from the plastic spoon at last because plastic is not good thermal conductor now electrical conductivity of metal and non metal you have known earlier that metals are generally electric conductors and non metals are electric non conductors or insulators now you will see uh, yourself how metals act as electric conductor and non metals act as a electrical non conductor now observation of electrical conductivity of metal required exercise one electric cell battery electric means we take a battery one electrical bulb two electrical wire uh, steel spoon piece of aluminum rubber wood plastic spoon take the electric cell and see that there is a positive sign at one end and negative sign on the other end connect one copper wire at one end of the cell and another copper wire at the end uh, and the other end of the cell one of you take the electrical bulb you will see two raised metallic points or thick wire like points at one end of the bulb which end is supposed to go into the stop now connect the open end of one wire with one of the connecting points of the bulb and connect the other wire with another connecting point we take a battery and in the battery there is a plus point and there is a negative point we uh, connect two copper wire with the dry cell or with the battery and 
to uh, connect this in the one uh, where is connected with the positive side and another where is connected with the negative side and then we uh, connect these two where with a bulb and after that when we uh, switch this that we see that this um, bulb is um, light up so why how can this uh, bulb light up because copper is a good electric conductor that's why it transmit electricity taking from the cell and sent to the bulb for this reason the bulb lights up so again we do this experiment with the help of wood or uh, plastic rubber or other uh, things it will not be lit up the bulb is not lit up now has the electric bulb uh, no since rubber, plastic and piece of wood, all these are electric non-conductor, they cannot conduct electricity charges from the cell. That's why we can say that copper or metal thing is a good electrical conductor. Now melting point and boiling point. To know about the melting point of the solid, we uh, do experiment required accessories, a beaker, wax, thermometer, test tube, speed lamp, etc. Procedure. Take some small pieces of wax in the test tube, taking water in the beaker and keep it on the speed lamp. You take wax in this uh, beaker and also take a speed lamp. Immerse the test tube and thermometer in the water of the beaker so that none of them touches the bottom of or the wall of the beaker with the help of the stand. Apply heat to the bottom of the beaker with the help of the speed lamp. Notice the thermometer reading and the wax uh, in the test tube. Is the temperature of the thermometer increasing? Is there any changes of the state of the wax? Observe carefully the condition of the wax when the temperature of the thermometer reaches nearly 57 degree Celsius. Now, then 57 degrees Celsius is the melting point of water. Now we take uh, wax in this test tube and we also hold a thermometer inside the beaker. Then we give heat uh, with the speed lamp uh, of this um, beaker water. Then after a few seconds we found that this uh, wax is melting. When the temperature go in the 57 degrees Celsius then the wax come to melting. So the wax melting point is 57 degrees Celsius. The temperature at which a solid begins to melt is known as its melting point. Again I repeat the temperature at which a solid begins to melt, melt is known as the melting point. So we can say that 57 degrees is the melting point of wax. Boiling point. The temperature at which water begins to vaporize is called the boiling point of water. Again I repeat the temperature at which water begins to vaporize is called the boiling point of water. So uh, to determine the boiling point of the water, one beaker, one thermo water, thermometer, speed lamp, etc. Take a beaker with half of it filled with water, put the beaker on the speed lamp. We can do this experiment at our home when we take water into our uh, pot and we um, place the pot into on the stove then we give heat and after a few uh, seconds we found that the water is boiling so it is the boiling point of the water and then the temperature is 100 degree celsius if we uh, pour thermometer into the boiling water and we found that uh, the temperature is 100 degree celsius so in 100 degree celsius water is boiling so it is called the boiling point of water now as the iron and copper plates are uh, striken with hammer, they create jingling sound and remain unbroken. Therefore, we can say that metals create jingling sound and do not break down easily when they are striken. Striken means giving pressure to the metal. That means metals are not fragile. On the other hand, sulfur and carbon will get broken and will not create jingling sound. So, uh, change of metal and non-metal when struck, when we uh, give pressure or struck the metal things, it uh, makes sound like jingling sound and it is not uh, broken. That's why we can say that metals are making sound and they are unbroken. Cooling. Um, cooling means the process of changing from liquefied wax to solid wax is known as cooling. 
the process of changing from liquid uh, liquefied wax to solid wax is known as cooling when we um, uh, boiling water when we uh, the the water is boiling then we keep it um, from the then we keep uh, the boiling water into one place and give them cool, uh, cooling sometimes for cooling then the water is cooled down when it is liquid form of water then again we uh, give um, this water more uh, coolness then it will be solid when we put this liquid water into the fridge then it will be cool down so it is the cooling point of the water this temperature so in uh, in case of wax it is also cooling down in 57 degree celsius this temperature that is 57 degree celsius is the freezing point of water so earlier you got the melting point of the wax as 57 degree celsius that means the melting point and freezing point of a matter is the same so we can say that melting point and freezing point of a matter is the same if the temperature of a matter remains beyond its freezing point and if it is greater than the surrounding temperature then if the matter is kept in the surrounding temperature it loses heat slowly as a result its temperature decreases and when the temperatures come to the freezing point it changes to solid state as it happens in case of wax when the wax was in liquid state its temperature was more than 57 degree celsius when the test tube with wax was brought outside in the emitted heat slowly as a result the temperature decreased it was decreasing in this way to reach the freezing point 57 degree celsius and then the wax was got frozen to become solid that means the wax has in the 57 degree celsius the wax is melting and also when we um, place the um, wax into the cooling space when the temperature reaches in the 57 degree celsius then it will become again solid so it is the cooling point of the wax my dear students i hope you understand our today's class you will practice this chapter at your home till then keep well assalamu alaikum